Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about how can we manage bleeding during when we are taking dental impression. So quite often we encounter that while we are taking impression, bleeding occurs and that bleeding can hinder the margin of, for example, crowns and bridges that we are trying to make. So to make that, we take dental impressions. So in this video, we'll talk about how to manage bleeding during impression. So let's get started. Now, while we take dental impressions, bleeding occurs quite frequently and there are various causes which are associated with bleeding while you are taking dental impression. Most commonly, when we use gingival retraction cord, for example, the cord is placed over here and then when we take that cord out, bleeding occurs because we have to place the gingival cord so that we can control the secretions and while immediately we take dental impression the cord is placed out and then we take the dental impression so gingival retraction cord is very important for margins of crowns and bridges that we're trying to make but however sometimes bleeding can occur other than that if we do not control the bleeding now bleeding then leads to incorrect margin in the impression and which can hinder or you can say it can make incorrect margins of our prosthesis now and these prostheses includes grounds and bridges. So what are the different causes and how do we actually manage this bleeding which occurs during dental impressions? So let's talk about that. Now, one of the most common reason as to why bleeding occurs during dental impression is patients who have poor oral hygiene. For example, in this clinical picture, you can see that there's inflamed gingiva which is present, associated with plaque and calculus which is present all around the teeth. And this patient most likely is suffering from periodontitis. So one of the most important reasons as to why bleeding occurs during dental impression is patients who have poor oral hygiene. So they are more susceptible to have bleeding during dental impression. So how do we solve this? We basically advise the patient to undergo oral prophylaxis, for example, undergoing scaling like one to two weeks prior to taking impression so that while the scaling is being done, a period of one to two weeks is given to the patient so that these gums can heal. Otherwise, if you take impression right after scaling, bleeding still occurs because as these gingiva is inflamed, bleeding will occur. So that will hinder the dental impression. So patients who have poor oral hygiene, they should undergo scaling one to two weeks minimum of um, period before they actually undergo dental impression. So this is one of the most common causes as to why bleeding occurs after dental impression. Now, secondly, as you can see in this clinical picture, crowns have been prepared and in, you can see in the gingival sulcus, this gingival retraction cord is placed now. Although this cord is required and you have to place it so that salivary secretion doesn't come over here and margins can be properly recorded. Just before impression is taken, this cord is immediately removed and impression is taken. But at times, this gingival retraction cord can lead to bleeding because when you place it in the sulcus and then you dry it out, and if you place the gingival uh, cord for a long period of time, it can dry up and when it is dried, it adheres slightly to the gingival margin and when you pull it out, it can lead to irritation and that irritation basically breaks the capillaries which are present over here and that can lead to bleeding. So this is an important thing which you should keep in mind when you're using gingival retraction cord. So how do we overcome that? To overcome that, we have a simple solution. For example, we can use triple syringe just wet it slightly so that it can easily remove do not over wet it just wet it as you can appreciate that there is some moistening going on over here so if that is present that means that you can now remove the gingival retraction cord and that will not rupture the capillaries and there will be no bleeding so this is also an important clinical aspect when you are using gingival retraction cord and taking dental impressions now there are different chemicals that we can also use to control bleeding and the most commonly used chemicals include ferric sulfate and aluminum chloride. Now, these two chemicals are frequently used. Firstly, we'll talk about ferric sulfate. Now, when we use ferric sulfate, one important drawback of using ferric sulfate is that when we use it, it leaves a brown black residue and that residue can adhere to tissues and cord, the gingival retraction cord, and it can, it can lead to further bleeding as well. And an important clinical aspect of this is that ferric sulfate can interfere setting of PVS and polyethylene impression material. So 
this is something that you should keep in mind when you're using ferric sulfate so an alternative or better option as compared to ferric sulfate is aluminum chloride now when we use aluminum chloride it doesn't leave leave any black brown residue it also doesn't interfere with pvs and polyethylene impression material that much but you should always keep in mind that it can lead to de deposition of residue but it is a better option than ferric sulfate so in this video we talked about how we can actually manage bleeding when we're taking dental impression firstly we talked about how bleeding actually occurs the most common reason of bleeding for example patient having poor oral hygiene then we talked about use of gingival retraction cord and how it can lead to gingival bleeding and how to overcome that and then finally we talked about different chemicals which we can use to overcome bleeding while taking dental impression so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time